In this beginner's guide, I will get you up and running with your Synology NAS in no time. The Synology NAS that I'm gonna use for this beginner's tutorial, that is this one. That is the Synology 923 Plus. The Synology 923 Plus is a NAS that allows you to add four hard drives inside it, and I will use SHR1 as my RAID setup. That means that the NAS will use one of my hard drives as a backup, and I will be able to use the hard drive space of all all the other ones. So if I add four 10 terabyte hard drives, I will have 30 terabytes of available storage. The fourth one, that one will be used for redundancy. So if one of my hard drives fails, well, then I've still kept all my data safe and I can restore it. If you want to know more about different raids, I have linked to that video below. In my case, I will add two of these 12 terabyte hard drives. That means that I will have 12 terabytes of available storage in this NAS. The other one will be my backup. And when I run out of space, well, then I can just add another two hard drives inside this one and I will get plenty of storage. The first thing we're gonna do that is to mount these hard drives inside the NAS. So let's start with that. So to do that, the first thing we have to do that is to open this NAS up. And here you just flip that open and then you pull it out like this. And these trays are adapted for both these three and a half inch drives and you can also mount two and a half inch, but it's a lot easier to mount a three and a half inch. So what you have to do first, that is to take away these little brackets that are on the inside. And to do that, you just pull here like that, take that off and do the same thing on the other side. Just pull that out. Then you take your drive, you put it here, you make sure that where the connectors are, that is supposed to be on that side, because that's the outside. You can't have the connectors there for obvious reasons. And then you just put it in here like that. And then the holes of the drive that you see here, those ones are lining up with the holes here. So just slide it down. And then you're gonna see that all the holes match up everywhere. And then you just take these things that you just removed and you put it back into the holes and now that hard drive is secured and do the same thing on the other side. Just put these ones in here. And now this hard drive is ready to be mounted into this NAS. And to do that, you just put it like this and then you just slide it in like that and put that down and now it's secured into the NAS. To attach the next one, we just do the same and then we just slide this hard drive into the NAS as well. And that is how easy we put in the drives into the NAS. So the next thing we need to do, that is to hook up this NAS into the network and we have to plug it in with a little electricity so you can start up. Let me bring out my router so I can do that. So here we have the router that I'm gonna plug my NAS into. So I'm just gonna plug in this network cord into the LAN port and then I'm gonna do the same on the NAS. So here in the back side we have one, two ports. So I'm gonna plug this one into port number one. And then we're gonna take this fancy, awkward, strange, and weird electricity plug. It looks like that. I've never seen anything like it. And then we're just going to plug that in here in the back as well. And then we just need to push the button here at the front. And remember that a NAS is actually a computer. And inside here, it's everything you need. It runs by itself. So it is a computer with two big hard drives. So it's just going to take a little while for it to boot up. And to log into the NAS, we're just gonna go into the web browser. And in the web browser, we're gonna type in find.synology.com. And then this is gonna happen. We're gonna see this startup screen where it says find your Synology NAS. And then we just have to click connect. And then we just have to accept the agreement. Always read the agreement. And then we're just gonna install. And then it's also recommended that it's automatically downloading the latest version of this. We just take next and then it says all data will be deleted. All data on the drives one and two because we have put in one and two drives will be deleted. We'll hit continue. And now it's just installing its operating system into these drives so it can work and do what a NAS is supposed to do. So let me get back to you whenever this is done. SM is updated to 7.1 and then we just hit start 
now it's time to go through the startup guide. So we're going to name the device my DS923. And next, I recommend that you go for the recommended one. Let's go for next. And now we're just going to create a Synology account to receive more benefits. And then the next thing we can set up the quick connect ID. And I think that is really handy because then I can just connect via URL and I'm going to select whatever it's pre-selected here. Let's submit that one. Then we're going to have some nice tools. I prefer to have these enable Synology active insight because then I can just check whatever the status is of the NAS. After this is set up, the next thing we're going to do that is to create storage pool and volume. So to create this, we're just going to hit start and the wizard is going to help us through this. So here we're going to select what RAID type we would like to have. Take a look at my previous video because there I'm going to go through the different most popular RAID types. And I'm going to select the SHR1 and that is also called just SHR because that is the one that is going to work best for all my needs. And then I'm just going to hit next. Now we're going to select our drives for the storage pool. And here you can see that, for example, I have the 12 terabyte drives in here, but here it says 10.9. But that is actually correct because the difference is how you calculate if it's binary or as you're used to with gigabytes and megabytes. So this is the same because it's just about 10% difference. So I select both of them and then I click next. The next step is if we're going to perform a disk check or not. And because this is the first time we're running these hard drives, I would really recommend it to perform this disk step. It will, or this disk check step, because we can check so there is nothing wrong with the disks. It's going to take a little bit longer time, but I still recommend to do it. And here I just recommend to set these to maximum and then we just click next. Here we're going to select the file system for the NAS and I really recommend to use BTRFS because that can enable so many great features on the NAS like snapshots for example that you won't get if you go for EXT4. So select the BTRFS and hit next. The only time you would not use BTRFS that is if you for example setting up a NAS only for security cameras. But that is more or less the only reason or the only situation I would recommend to not go for the BTRFS. Here we're just going to click apply, it's just giving us a summary of what we have. We have set up the RAID to SHR or SHR1 as it's called also. And we have set the file system to BTRFS. So just go ahead and click apply. And here we're just going to get a warning that we're going to erase everything on the drives. So you just would like to confirm that you are sure. And yes, I am. Okay. So what's happening now is that the NAS is automatically checking the drives for failures and stuff and it's going to take a long time. It's going to take about 18 hours to complete, but we can work with it while this is going on. So the next thing we're going to do that is to set up the schedule data scrubbing. So you just click schedule data scrubbing and then enable data scrubbing schedule. And here I would recommend that we are doing this data scrubbing about every three months or so. And let's repeat these every three months. And then if you're running these NAS on an office or where anywhere where you have a lots of data traffic in and out, then I should recommend to set these run data scrubbing only during specific periods where you have a downtown or low usage time so you don't steal performance from the network while doing this action. So what this data scrubbing is doing, it's going to use the BTRFS to check if there is any silent data corruption and then it can actually fix that automatically. So this is a fantastic feature. And then we just hit save on this. Okay, so now this is done. So now we can just close this section of this operating system. So the next thing we're going to do, that is just to install some very essential data packages. So let's open up the package center. Just accept these ones. And then we're just going to install the XFAT, wherever that one is here. This one, because it's for free in DMC7. We also would like to install the Synology snapshot replication, this one. Uh, install. And this you only need to install if you have a BTRFS volume because it's only working with BTRFS. And then what we also need to install that I recommend to have, that is some kind of backup. Like for example, the here, well, I also recommend to have, for example, the hyper backups. You can backup really essential files from this 
NAS because if it fails, it's gone. If it burns up or something like that, you can't get anything back from it. So that's why you should back up essential things to another place like the cloud or something like that so you can get it back if this thing fails. Okay, so now when we have installed this, the next thing we're gonna do that is to go into the control panel to create our first volume. So here, this is where we set everything up. So we can go to shared folders and here we can create a share folder on these NAS. I would recommend to limit the amount of share folders you have. So you, for example, only have one for business and one for private, for example, because it's gonna be messy if you have too many, but create the ones you really need. So how you're gonna use the shared folders is, for example, if you have a business and you have the marketing team, there is no one else that is supposed to be able to access the marketing team uh, files and folders, then create a share folder for the marketing team. Because you would like to keep this under maybe five or at least six shared folders. If you would like to have more, you should probably look into use advanced shared folder permissions instead, because that should be better for you. I'm not gonna go through that now because it's a little bit more advanced. So we can, for example, create one for our family. So create one and create one shared folder and let's call it the family one. And description, it can be the same. The volume is the volume we have. And then we're just gonna hit next and encrypt. Well, that, that is if someone steals your hard drive, if, are they gonna be able to access this or not? But for this use, I'm not gonna have that. I'm just gonna hit next. Here, if we have, or you should have the BTRFS volume, but here I really recommend to enable the data checksum for advanced data integrity. That will be a little bit slower, but it will have a lot better protection for your data. So I think it's a really good idea to enable this. And then we're just gonna hit next and then next again. And here is not really any use to set up the permissions here yet because I just have one account, it's just me. So yes, let's hit apply. And if you see here, that, well, there are more user accounts, whereas one of them is the admin. And do not enable that one because that is a bad security risk because if someone tried to break in, then admin, well, that is the way you usually go first. So now we can close this down and then we can go to the file station. And here we can see that we have the family shared folder. And the only thing we have here, well, that is a recycling bin because we don't have anything here yet. But one good thing to set up, that is the uh, schedule for automatically emptying the recycling bin because you have probably had a USB stick and then you have plugged it into the computer and you thought you deleted everything, but you don't have any storage left on a USB stick. And that is because you never emptied the trash. So we're gonna set up an automatic trash uh, scheduling here so that is taken care of automatically. So to do that, we're gonna close this down and we're gonna open up the control panel again and then we're going to go to the share folders and then we have the task scheduler here at the bottom. And then we go to create, we take scheduled task and recycling bin. And let's name it empty bin, for example. And then we're gonna have enable and we're gonna to go to the tab for scheduling it. So let's run this every day and then down here we say every day at midnight and then on task settings, we can set that we're gonna empty all recycling bins. And here down here at retention policy, I would like to have, for example, number of days to retain deleted files. I would say maybe seven days. That means that everything that has been in a recycling bin for longer period of time than seven days, that is gonna be deleted. But things that are newer that you deleted this morning or this evening or tomorrow, that is still gonna be there. And it's usually in a very short period of time that you realize that you have deleted something that you needed. So that's why this is really important and good to set up. And then we're gonna go ahead and click okay and yes. The next thing we're gonna do, that is to split up our admin user and my regular user, because I prefer to have one admin account and then another user account. So when I do my regular daily task, when I store things and grab files and such, then I use my user account. And then if I need to administrate something, then I log in with my admin account. The benefit of that is that if my user account that I'm using all the time should be compromised, then the stealer, the thief of my credentials cannot do so much with the drive. That's why I'm gonna split those up. So to do that, we're gonna go here to user and groups. So here we can also set up if we're gonna use, I would like to share this with my family. So let's go to group and create, and then we call it the family. 
and then we can just hit next and because we haven't added any family members yet there's not going to be anything here so we're just going to hit next and here because it's the family in the family folder everyone should have read and write permissions on these folder and here we can set up a quota for example that oh they shouldn't access more than two gigabyte of storage or something like that but for me it doesn't really matter because i love my family and i love to share with my family and here we don't need to set anything up right now either and the same here and we're just going to click through all of this so it's saved and then i'm going to go into the users and then i'm going to change the user that i've logged into to something else so it's this is going to be my admin account that i'm not going to use for any daily usage and we're going to set up a new user for myself and then we're just going to create that one and now i would like to be a member of my own family so i'm going to check that one and for this one, I do not would like to be an administrator because for that I have my administrator account. And here, because I'm already a member of the family, it says that my group permission gives me read and write access to this folder. And I can override that here if I don't want to have that for this specific user. And I just hit next. And this is the same as we did before. So just go through this. And now that user is set up as well. Because we're going to be hooked up so I can access my NAS over internet, I would like to go to advanced tab here. And here I would like to set up password rules so we make sure that every user that is logging into this NAS actually have a strong password. So for example, we would like to include special characters, for example, or we would like to have a minimum password length. Then we also have at the bottom here, enable password expiration i do not recommend to enable that because a password is only vulnerable if it has been exposed or compromised if you actually force someone to replace a password within a certain period of time that usually only creates the habit of having instead of having just mats one two three next time it's mats one two three four and next time it's just mats one two three four five and it doesn't create stronger passwords, rather the opposite because people are using more simple and easier passwords. Instead of recommend to use something like one password, for example, where you can store all your passwords securely and then you just have one strong password so you can access all of your passwords inside that password manager instead. And here I also really recommend that you force password change after the administrator resets user passwords, just so they have to set their own password if I have to reset it for some reason. And then also what I recommend, scroll to the bottom of the advanced tab and to enable that, that means that you enable a home folder for each user so they have their own folder where they can store their documents and such. And that is really nice, a nice service for your family and member. Just to remember is that you as the administrator, if you log in with your administrator account, then you will have access to all home folders as well. Then we can just close this down. So now if we go to the file station, here we can see that we now have three different folders set up. That is the family one, that is the shared ones that we created in the beginning. Then we have the home one, that is the home folder for me, my personal one. And homes folders, that are the different homes folders for all the users that are set up into this Synology NAS. And I can see this one just because I'm logged in as the administrator on this NAS. If I wasn't, I would not see that one. So the next thing we're going to do now, that is just to set up the snapshots. And that is so powerful because that allows you to go back in time and restore files as they were before. So let's do that. Let's close this down. So let's go up here to the top left. And here we're going to just click the main menu and then we're going to go to the snapshots replication and here i just don't want to show this next time i log in okay so let's start by going to this tab where it says snapshots so i'm going to set this up for the family folder first because say that one of my family members are hooked up to internet and they download some weird things that they upload to the nas and then encrypts everything well then we are protected because then we can use these snapshots to roll back in time so we are protected from that bad thing that happened. So let's do that now. So let's go to here and then let's go to settings. And then we're just going to go to retention. We're going to enable a retention policy and we're going to keep all snapshots for say 25 days. And this means that for example, if you are deleting a file or you delete the recycling bin, you will not get the space back until the end of the 25th day because that is when the snapshot is 
been deleted as well. Other than that, everything is just going to run smooth because you're not even going to notice that it's there until you really need it and you need to roll back a file or two. And then I just remember that I forgot to enable here, enable snapshot schedule and then OK. And then we're going to do that for homes as well. Set it to retention every 28 days. And OK. So if anything should go bad, the only thing you need to go through to get it back is just to go in here and go back to recovery and then you can roll things back. Okay, so now let's take a look how we can access the files that we have on the NAS. Go in here to networks and then double click the Synology NAS that you have created and then connect as and you type in your username and then your password. Connect. And this is the easiest way to connect to the NAS. So now we have access to all these shared folders in the NAS and you can find it just here. So this is basically how you set up the Synology NAS and the next thing we have to do that is to watch that video because that is the video YouTube recommended to watch next. So see you in that one. Bye.